Welcome to another Masterclass episode. I'm Lance Best with the Lincoln Electric Welding Technology and Training Center. Today we'll be discussing TIG welding or gas tungsten arc welding of thick aluminum with DC negative polarity using helium as a shielding gas. Today we got quarter inch thick sections and we got eighth inch electrodes. We got our Aspect 375 machine and we'll be using pure helium of course as a shielding gas. The advantage of using DC positive is actually to clean the oxides off of the aluminum. However, it took thick tungsten just to weld using DC positive. And the reason that we would use helium is it provides a hotter arc. So the arc plasma of helium is actually much hotter than the arc plasma of argon and that arc plasma actually burns or melts the oxides off of the surface of the aluminum. And those oxides on aluminum actually melt around 3700 degrees Fahrenheit whereas the uh, actual aluminum itself only melts at 1200 degrees. So since we're welding in DC negative, there's going to be a lot more heat, so you have to be more careful uh, with your uh, arc control using your, your foot pedal or your amp troll. So here I'm going to run a demo for you guys, just to, just to give you an insight to what this is about. Here we got our 6061 sections that I'm going to weld for you guys, a quarter inch thick material. Uh, I got my machine set at about 200 amps, which uh, as you get near the end, it's definitely more than what you need to weld this. Uh, and then we got the pure helium shielding gas. Okay. The demonstration I'm going to give is what I'm going to show you. We're going to clean this up before we weld it. I'm going to tack it together. And then um, I'm going to run a weld bead or a bead from one side to the other uh, using this. All right. Um, there is going to be a lot of, of the heat. So you're going to see I'm going to try and hold my hands further away from the part so I don't burn my hands. Um, and that's simply that, that radiant heat from that arc plasma can be felt a lot more than you can actual on the argon itself. So let me go ahead and clean these up. I'm going to do a mechanical cleaning of the oxides. I mean, there are surface oxides that can be brought down with a stainless steel brush, and you don't want to contaminate this brush with any other metals. So if you're welding stainless steel or, or mild steel or anything, and you're using a brush to clean them, don't use that brush on something else, such as aluminum or mild steel or anything else, okay? That you need to have that brush just dedicated to what you're using it for. So I'm gonna clean this up mechanically, and then I'm um, gonna actually tack it together real quick. Okay, the fill rod that I'm using is ER4043. Okay, and the base metal I'm welding is 6061T6. Now sometimes the arc is actually a little bit harder to start. Okay, and that's simply because of the, uh, there we go. Simply because of the, the helium requires higher uh, ionization or higher electron voltage to ionize. So helium compared to argon, you'll end up running about 22 to 25 volts when you're welding with helium, whereas with argon, you're running about uh, 9 to 12 volts, anywhere between there. Okay, I got this piece here. I'll get myself situated so that when I can run, I can weld continuously. You may have to move around a little bit, get yourself comfortable. And that's key in TIG welding, is always be comfortable with what you're doing. I'm gonna hold my torch a little bit further back. I'm gonna try and keep my electrodes or my fill rod a little bit further back. Okay, now we're going to start welding here. Now as I weld, I'm going to start a little bit higher amperage. And as I weld, I'm going to start to depress this pedal or uh, back off on the heat, as we call it. Okay, I'm going to try and maintain a proper angle. Okay, and now we're beginning to, to saturate this aluminum with heat. Okay, and this is what it takes. It only takes 1200 degrees to melt this stuff. But that surface oxide, you notice right in the middle, that oxide is, is uh, getting burnt off pretty badly. Uh, but when you look in the edges, you will see all of the, uh, the oxides kind of melted there. Okay, and that's, uh, that's normal. It's a normal part of welding this. Okay. Now, I have my machine set at 200 amps. Um, that's maximum when your foot's all the way down, but I probably didn't even use that just to initiate the welding. And as I get near the end, I'm starting to back off more and more. Okay, trying to get this filled in, fill that crater in. Okay. 
uh, 23 amps at the very end of this weld. That's how saturated this is with heat, okay? Now, if you look at the surface, notice down the middle it's silver. Yeah, that's where the oxides are completely burnt off. Along the edges, we still have some oxides. That can be mechanically clean. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take this, rotate it so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, and I see that right down the middle. That's where my torch was, and that's where the initial arc was. Now it's direct current, so the arc's not spreading all over. The arc is kind of focused right down the middle or towards at the, uh, coming from the tip of the tungsten all the way into the base metal. Okay, now something like this, just gonna mechanically clean it once again. Get those oxides off of it. Make it presentable, okay? And there we go, we have that stack of dimes look. Uh, it can always be better, um, because practice makes perfect. That's what I personally prefer to do. I like to practice until I got that, that look down. Okay, this is, once again, I don't often weld aluminum in DC polarity, or straight polarity like this, but like I said, in a pinch it can be done. Now, for comparison's sake, I can weld up an AC section. So I can prepare a sample here, just to weld an AC so that you can get a chance to actually see the etching line that's actually created while you're welding. Uh, this example here is going to be welding with an alternating current. I'm still using helium as a shielding gas, and you can do that with helium. You can also do it with pure argon. I'm just doing it out of pure convenience, convenience right now because my machine's already hooked up to that. But what I want to show to you guys is, um, is a demonstration of the etching, the actual etching that the actual positive polarity side of an alternating current does to the base metal. And then you'll see the penetration that it also performs on a DC negative side. So, I'm gonna get myself comfortable. Okay, so I can do this. Since I am welding with helium, it is gonna be substantially hotter. Okay, I'm also gonna mechanically clean my weld. That can be performed. It doesn't have to be as much and say if we're welding in straight polarity because alternating current's gonna help uh, burn the oxides off of this more efficiently than even straight polarity. Okay. I'll grab my fill rod, which is ER4043. It's an eighth inch material. I'm gonna start my welding. I set my machine a little bit higher for that initial amperage. Okay, I'm gonna hold my torch a little bit further back and also my, my electrodes, all right? So here we go. I terminated the arc I had about 84 amps going into that base metal right there a little bit more than half uh, more than double than I initially had when I was welding in straight polarity also as you can see that uh, that AC wave etched the part that we were welding so you see that etching line all along that edge okay and the whole weld itself the whole weld material or the filler metal itself is very clean okay that also got cleaned all the oxides are cleaned off by the etching action and then also I had good penetration, similar penetration, and slightly a little bit more control, simply because um, it, not all the heat was always going into the part. Okay, if you notice my tungsten had burned back a little bit, it rounded out on the tip. Okay, that's normal for AC welding. But I got a very, very clean surface of the actual weld itself. The oxides have been cleaned off on the surface as well. and welding in AC current did its job of cleaning the base metal and making acceptable looking welds, okay? A little bit more heat involved, but this is welding in AC. This is what you're gonna get with it. 
So thanks for attending another master class session. I'm Lance Bess, welding instructor at Lincoln Electric Weld School, and I'll see you next time.